Continue on with uh, topic 8.7 here. Let's take a look at this next problem. This is part two of our video on this uh, particular topic. Let's find the volume of this object that has a base bounded by the x-axis and the parabola 4 minus x squared. And again, we have square cross sections. All right. So we are, again, sticking our Scrabble pieces out, like we said yesterday, which means my volume is going to be, be the integral of the side squared dx. But what we have to do on all of these problems is determine what is the side. So my side, in this case, and it's kind of drawn in here for us, that is my edge of the Scrabble piece right there. And that side length is always going to correspond to a function value. And in this case, the function is 4 minus x squared. And that is my function value. Yesterday, we had to double that value because we were talking about an area ab both above and below the x-axis. We do not have to double this one. All right. So in this case, my volume is the integral of 4 minus x squared, the quantity squared dx. All right. My limits of integration come from the zeros of this parabola here and here. And it's pretty obvious that if I set 4 minus x squared equal to 0, those intercepts are going to be positive and negative 2. So my intercepts are negative 2 to 2. Be very careful squaring that binomial. We don't want to uh, make an algebra error. This is not 16 minus x to the fourth. It is 16 minus 8x squared plus x to the fourth. That's going to be my integral from negative 2 to 2 dx. Okay, and then we would finish that problem like normal. Remember, you have to plug in your limits of integration at the end, all right, to find the answer to that problem. Let's go on to the next problem. Now we have a rectangular cross section. All right. Find the volume of an object whose base is bounded by the x-axis. x equals e. Now notice something. Um, x equals e is a vertical line. All right. So over here is x equals e. And the curve, y equals the natural log of x. So that means this value right here has got to be 1. With rectangular cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis, rectangular. The rectangular cross sections are four times as tall as the given base at any value x. So let's see how that shakes out, all right? So now I've got a, some kind of rectangular cross-section here. So it's more rectangular instead of square, all right? And they're four times as tall as the given base. So what is my given base? It's the natural log of x. So that means the width or the base is the natural log of x. The length is 4 times the natural log of x. And my height is still going to be that little dx. So. I'm going to have, in this case, my volume is going to be the integral 
of, remember, length times width times height in this case. We've got to um, use length times width times height, but we said our height is the dx. All right? So, based on our model up here, I'm going to have this, the natural log of x, times 4 times the natural log of x. So I'm going to have the integral of 4 times the natural log of x, the quantity squared dx. My limits of integration are from 1 to e. So that problem has a little bit different setup, but it's really not that bad. We can do that problem on the graphing calculator. Do the TI-84 and get 2.873. All right. One last problem to wrap up topic 8.7. This is based on an actual free response question. An object has cross sections that are squares perpendicular to the y-axis. The base of the object is bounded by the x and y axes. x equals 1, which is right here, and the function x cubed plus 1, which is there. Find the volume of the object. All right. So, what we have here is we've got this cubic that is moved up one. And so, if you look right in here at this area, if my cross sections are squares in here, the volume of every single one of these is going to be of this of all of these added up together i should have said are going to be 1 times 1 times 1 this thing right in here is sticking out as a cube So the volume of this thing, we're thinking of a cube that is 1 by 1 by 1. All right? So I know that the volume of this thing is going to be 1 plus something. Now, because they did this sideways, we need to take this y equals x cubed plus 1 and solve it for x and put it in terms of y. So I subtract 1 from both sides. y minus 1 equals x cubed. Take the cube root of both sides and x equals the cube root of y minus 1. All right. So my limits of integration are going to be the y values from 1 to 2. So these are sideways, sideways, and they added another little twist in here. It's not just the function value. It's 1 minus the function value because I'm only dealing with this area in here and that is what I'm squaring just like we did when we were doing the squares alright so this problem had quite a bit different setup because we had this cube thing that's going to be added on and then we had to do it with respect we had to do it with respect to y, and then we had to subtract these things from 1, because this distance over here is not just the function value, it's 1 minus the sideways function value.
So that's a little bit more challenging problem. Um, but I think you will see lots of them, like these others that we have done, that are very manageable. And we will stop there for today.